Step Up, Part 1. That's actually going to take you through putting the lines on the machine and recirculating. Okay, so as I go along um, through the steps, I'll explain uh, everything that you need to do and also in the order in which you need to do so. So let's get started. Um, just for your information, full PPE should be worn during setup of the machine. Um, I had to take my mask off because um, the sound was not clear. Okay, so just be reminded that you need to have on full PPE, which would include the shield, as I'm wearing a gown, a face mask, and of course, your gloves. So today, we're going to set up the Fresenius K machine, K as in kite. And there is a newer machine um, to this one, however, I guarantee you that once you have learned how to proficiently set up this machine, which is the K, you will have absolutely no problems setting up the T machine. Uh, we also think that because these are the machines that we're using at the school site, which is where we're um, actually filming this video, um, you will be able to master that skill very quickly once you use this video to supplement your um, skills training. Okay, so uh, before we start, before you start setting up a machine for a patient, you need three main things, okay? The bloodlines, which comes with a set um, one venous line, bloodline, and one arterial bloodline. You need the dialyzer, which is your artificial kidney, and your normal saline solution, because the objective is to prime the air from the lines and dialyzer. Okay, you also need a safety clamp. It's not absolutely mandatory that you prime with a safety clamp, which is like a scissor. However, we like to teach you to prime with the clamp because it helps you when you reach the, the point of rinsing back a patient. You always rinse back the patient's blood with a safety clamp. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is open up the pair of blood lines. You'll see a line at the top of the package, which tells you that you could just rip off the top instead of fighting with the rest of the plastic. Now, the top of your machine is your shelf. Okay, so you're going to use it to store your garbage, anything that you are going to dispose of, and also your supplies that you need. So you're not going to walk around and put your supplies somewhere else. Okay, so the blue is your venous line, the red is your arterial line. So we're going to rest the venous line on top of the machine, and we're going to put the arterial line on the machine. So the one thing that I've, I've always told students is, you have some protective um, tape or paper on the lines. Do not remove these papers until you know exactly where you're going to put that part of the line. These papers actually help you to have more control of the blood lines because you cannot have anything touching the floor. If you're setting up and any of these lines touch the floor, any part of these lines touch the floor, it's considered contaminated, so it needs to go in the garbage and you have to start over again. And that's the last thing you need when you have patients' machines to set up and patients need to go on the machine. So the first thing, if you look at your machine, 
you'll see that it's color coded. Okay, so there is no confusion. Also, the shape of the chamber in the direction that it's supposed to go. So you're going to gently put this chamber, which is the arterial chamber, right in the slot. Remember, if you break any part of the machine, it has to be taken out of service. I'm going to clamp this line because I'm not going to use it. Okay, same to my left. I have here what's called the saline T-line. It's called the T-line because it's shaped like a T. Your T goes in the middle of these two clamps. Just like that. Then I have my transducer protector. This is the arterial transducer protector which protects the internal transducer. I'm going to put this on here and I'm going to, if you notice, I'm holding it right here because this, is, this part is very fragile. I don't want to force this into this part of the machine because if it breaks off, the machine has to be pulled from service and that's now a biomedical issue. So I'm going to gently, gently tighten right here so I know it's secure. So as you notice, I'm moving from the left. There is a part of the arterial bloodline that's thicker than the other part. This is the part of the arterial bloodline that goes inside the blood pump. Consider your blood pump as the engine of the machine when you're giving patients treatment. So I'm going to measure just to estimate how I'm going to start to thread this part of the arterial line through the blood pump. So because I still have the tapes on this line, I can let it go and it's not going to touch the floor. So now I'm going to take this part of the arterial bloodline, push it in to the blood pump, then your start stop button will start to turn the wheel. So I need to thread this part inside the blood pump. So I'm just going to start the wheel. While I'm doing this, I'm not putting my finger anywhere near this wheel. Okay, so my finger stays on here, and I press this, and this will thread it. When I get to the end, I'm going to secure this part. Now, I don't like how this looks, so I'm going to do it again just to make it even. So I'm going to pull out the first part that I did, press the wheel again, press the start button to move the wheel, then I'm going to come back, secure this first part, and as you can see, I'm holding here. I'm going to press the start button, and I have my finger is nowhere close to that wheel because I don't want to lose my finger. Okay, when I put the, this part inside, this part of the arterial line inside the blood pump, I close the door. Now I need, <clears throat> sorry, I need to separate this part of the line. So now that I know exactly what I'm going to do with this line, I can separate, remove the tape. Okay, so I remove the tape from this part. And as you can see, I'm also going to remove the tape from this part because I need to show you that there are two ends to this line, this arterial. I'm going to slide this white clamp back and I'm going to attach this line to these hooks 
in the bucket. So I have finished with my arterial bloodline except this part which is going to go on the dialyzer and remember your saline T line we're going to do something with that also. The next step is I'm going to take my venous bloodline and if you look closely, you could see that this side of the machine is also color-coded blue. Just like my arterial chamber here, I have a venous chamber here. You notice I'm leaving the tapes on because it helps me to control the lines. I'm going to bend this because it's not going to break. Okay, if I don't bend it, it's going to be very hard for me to get it in. If I bend it like this, I'm just going to slide it into the slot. And you want this part, there's a ridge at the top of this uh, chamber. You want it to line up with the blue lines behind it. Okay, when I put my venous chamber in, I'm going to snap and close the door. I'm also going to clamp this short line because I'm not going to use it. On the venous line, I also have a transducer filter protector that protects the internal transducer, which is a part of the machine. Now that I know what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to remove the tape. See, I'm using my machine to store everything until I'm finished. I slide this back and I'm going to gently put this transducer filter on. And you notice where I'm holding to tighten. I don't want to screw this in so tightly that it breaks off into the machine because if it does, the machine will have to be pulled from service. Okay, so if you notice on, because I know exactly what I'm gonna do with this part of the venous line, I can remove my tape. If you also notice on the venous line, there is a short end, which I'm gonna attach to the dialyzer because I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to use my machine to help me to hold on to it. The long end, just like the long end on the arterial bloodline, goes into the bucket. So I slide back this white clamp and I bring the venous line over the machine and snap it into this little holder. The reason why these aren't completely in, into the bottom of the bucket is because I don't want the bucket is cleaned between patient use, but I just want to be extra careful just in case the bucket wasn't cleaned properly I want to make sure that the end of my arterial bloodline and the end of my venous bloodline is not touching the bottom of the bucket because these are the two ends that's going to be connected directly to my patient. Okay, so that's the main reason. I also need to protect these short ends of the bloodlines because these parts of the lines are also going to be connected to the patient's blood. So you could do this in uh, which it doesn't matter if you open up your saline first or you open up your dialyzer package first. But I'm going to open up my dialyzer packet. So inside of the packet, we have 
two, what looks like two caps, okay? Um, so be mindful that these two caps cannot hit the floor. You cannot let these fall out your packet because you're going to need them to cap the dialyzer to keep it sterile. Also, you're going to need to save these two caps until the end of the patient's treatment when you're removing the used lines and dialyzer, you're going to need these caps to go back onto the dialyzer. Okay, before I open up my dialyzer packet, I want to make sure I check the lot number and expiration date. Also, it's usually somewhere, dialyzers are different, but it's usually here on the label. And also, I want to make sure that this is the right prescription for the patient. So this number is going to be on the patient's treatment orders or prescription. So you want to verify the dialyzer type and number. Make sure you cross-check it with the patient's dialysis orders. And you also want to note the lot number and expiration date because that's going to have to go on your patient's um, treatment sheet or flow sheet. Okay, so usually there's a little um, notch or slit on your, your packaging and you're going you're gonna to look for that and open it. But again, you have to be careful that these don't fall on the floor. So as I open one part, I'm going to screw this on because I don't want it to fall on the floor. There's my next cap. Now I could take this completely out of the packaging and I'm going to put this on. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to make sure when you have a dialyzer that has a label like this, you know that the dialyzer is in the upright or the correct position when you are able to read the dialyzer size. This is what's telling you the dialyzer size. Okay, so when you can read this clearly, you know that it's in the right position. Okay, so if, if, it, if I were to turn it like this, then you would know that the dialyzer is upside down. Okay, so this is the right position, and I'm gonna keep it like this for now. Okay, so what I'm doing is, there is um, sort of like a lip on here, so my finger is not gonna go there. I'm going to use the dialyzer, push that back, and then put it in. I also want to make sure that the label is facing out and it's not obscured. So not like this, okay? As anyone passes alongside the patient's machine, you want to make sure that they can read the label on the dialyzer. Okay, so my dialyzer is attached. Now I'm going to open up my normal saline solution. So I'm looking for a little glitch or a slip on the bag. Found it. I'm going to open it. Keep my garbage up top. And you're going to make sure it's the right solution. Usually, um, these are the only solutions that's in the dialysis unit, but you also, you also need to verify. Whenever you grab anything to set up for a patient, you want to verify. And somewhere along the bag, there is an expiration date. You want to check that also. Okay, when I hang my saline bag, I want to make sure that I can read what's in the bag. Not only what's in the bag, but the amount of saline. Okay, so the label has to face out. So if you put the saline bag up like this, that's wrong. Okay, so your label has to face out. Okay, so when 
remember I told you that these two short ends, we were going to connect them to the dialyzer. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do that. So I don't want too many things in my hand at the same time, so I'm going to allow the machine to help me to hold this one. The, the dialyzer is in the right position. Arterial bloodline is on top. Venous bloodline at the bottom. So I'm just going to use this to turn my dialyzer. I'm going to remove this cap. Remove this cap from the line and just gently screw in. Okay, I don't want too many things in my hand because the chances are I'm going to contaminate something if I have too many things in my hand. Now I'm going to take the arterial end, which is the arterial end of the um, arterial bloodline, the short end. I'm going to remove this from the dialyzer. I already removed the cap from the bloodline without touching. Gently screw in. Now I have my saline. Remember when I mentioned the saline T-line? It's called the saline T-line for a reason because now I'm going to put this line inside my saline bag. So now that I know exactly what I'm going to do with this saline line, I'm going to remove the papers. Okay, while I'm removing, I'm protecting the end of that line at all times because I don't want this to fall on the floor. Now, there is a cap on here and there is a part of this saline bag that has to be removed. So the order in which you're supposed to do that is remove this piece first, just twist and pull, and then remove this cap immediately before you spike or advance it inside your saline bag. Okay, I'm going to do that, but I also want to clamp this because I'm not ready to have my saline leave the bag. Okay, now that we have spiked our saline bag or put the saline line inside this part of the saline bag, we're going to need one of our scissor clamps. The first thing that you want to do is prime your arterial line by gravity. What do I mean? I want the saline to come from the saline bag through the saline line and I need it to go in this direction all the way around into the bucket. So the first thing I'm going to do clamp, or my scissor clamp, it could be yellow, blue, green, at the top of the T. This is the T line, this is my saline line, and there's the shape of the T. I'm going to put it on top of the T. Then, when I do that, I unclamp this clamp on the saline line, so my saline will start to run from the bag through this line, along this part of my arterial line, all the way around, through here, to the bucket. As you can see, saline is running into the bucket. When I see that, it means that all the air is gone, so now I can clap this one clamp. After doing that, which is priming my arterial line by gravity, I'm going to remove my clamp, place it at the bottom of the T. Now, in order for my saline to be pulled from the bag to come here, 
go in my arterial chamber through the blood pump all the way over to the dialyzer through the dialyzer into the venous chamber all the way down the venous line to the bucket I have to start my pump. There is a button on the machine to the right that says prime. I'm going to press that button. When I press that button my blood pump didn't start so this is the one that's blinking, correct? So it's telling me press your start button. As you can see this button is to start and also to stop my blood pump. So I want to start my blood pump and I want to keep it going so I'm going to press start again. As I start to prime I want to keep this chamber, my arterial chamber, I want to keep it three-fourths full with normal saline. So here's my button. You have a picture of the arterial chamber there. I'm going to press it. And as I press it, you could see the chamber filled up. Okay, I want to trap the air on this side. So I fill this chamber up two-thirds or three-fourths there is a line here that you could see or if you feel it you could feel the ridge on it okay so right now I'm pulling the saline from the bag through the arterial chamber through the blood pump so the whole idea of running saline through the lines to the dialyzer ultimately to the bucket is to get rid of the air from the lines and dialyzer. Now, this is the correct position of the dialyzer. However, when I'm priming, I need to turn the dialyzer upside down. This way, the air gets out faster and it's more effective. Now, as I look at my machine, I notice that my blood pump has stopped. Remember, if you're priming and your blood pump is not running, you're really not priming. There is nothing happening. Okay, so I'm going to press reset to clear the memory. And when I did that, my pump started. I have an air detector alarm, so I'm going to try to reset that alarm. That doesn't work, so I'm going to go back to my prime button. So if you notice, as I press my prime button, the pump starts again. You basically have three go-to buttons when you're priming. You could press prime. If your blood pump doesn't start, you reset the memory and press start. Prime, reset, or start will start your blood pump. Remember, you want your blood pump to run, right? If your blood pump is not running like this or moving like this, priming has stopped. So what did I say when you're priming? If your blood pump stops, I have three go-to buttons. Either prime, reset, which that, once my pump starts, I don't need to do anything else. It's prime, reset, or start will start my blood pump. And I can't forget that I'm priming 500 cc's or milliliters from my bag, and I'm almost there. So when I get to 500 or the 5 mark, that's 500, I'm going to stop my blood pump because that's enough saline to prime the air from the lines and dialyzer. After I see I'm at 500 and I stop my blood pump, I'm going to go to where I have my venous and arterial line in the bucket. 
I'm going to clamp my venous line and at this point I'm going to remove both of them from the bucket bring them towards me while protecting the ends because remember these two ends are going to be connected to my patient so I want to untangle anything that needs to be untangled so eyeball I see that this needs to come to the front now they're free to attach to the patient when I'm ready I'm going to remove one of these caps I prefer to remove the arterial because when just in case there is any minor contamination to this um, arterial end when I connect it to the patient it's going to go away from the patient and to the dialyzer so hopefully any contamination will be filtered if I remove the venous and I accidentally some minor contamination something that you wouldn't even imagine when I connect to the patient it's going directly to the patient or if there is any air bubble so I prefer to remove the cap, the connection from the arterial end. I lift this up. If you see this, hold on to this end, remove this part, and then I'm going to make this into one circuit. So notice that they screw tightly in the opposite direction. So blue goes in this direction red go so I'm doing my hand like this so I just want to make sure that they are secured then I'm gonna hang them here I could always hang them here and before I take my hands down I have two clamps that I need to open up one two and then the third clamp three and I'm gonna hang this on the machine so the reason why the clamps must be removed is because I'm now going to recirculate the saline. That means I need the saline that's in the lines and dialyzer to keep moving around and around the circuit. And this is called the circuit. Okay, this is called the extracorporeal circuit. If I don't remove these clamps, one, two, and I have this here. If I don't remove these clamps, the saline is not going to be able to go around and around in circles or recirculate. So again, one, two, three clamps. Hang this on a free hook. And now I need my pump to run, right? In order for this saline to go around and around in the circuit or recircuit, I'm going to reset. And I notice that there are no alarms, so I'm just going to start my pump. And at this point, so once I start my pump, I'm now going to go to the venous chamber and there is an up down button and a picture that means if I press the down arrow it's going to push the saline down in the chamber if I press the up arrow it's going to bring it up but I need to start my pump and do that at the same time so if you could see the fluid just came up so I have to tell you that this is the only part of the machine that detects air and if you open the door and look closely you'll see these two silver knobs on either side these are the air detector sensor okay when these sensors detect air we have an air detector alarm. This is not the case now. There is no air. This is a different alarm, so I need to clear this alarm. Okay, I'm using uh, individual jugs, so I'm getting a, a conductivity alarm, so I need to put a new jug.
so that I'll have enough bicarbonate solution. Okay, whenever there is a problem with the dialysate, I'm going to have a conductivity alarm. Okay, so again, as I recirculate the normal saline, I'm just tapping on my dialyzer to just um, get rid of any residual air that's there. And also, I'm looking at my venous chamber to make sure that this is filled up two-thirds. Okay, once I see if the, ch the chamber is put in the correct position, once I see the normal saline, it means that I have it at the right level. Okay, so at this point, I'm recirculating the normal saline. I have a conductivity alarm, so I would not be able to put my machine in test because it will fail because I have an alarm. So I have to wait for the conductivity to come up. And the normal conductivity range is 13.5 to 14.5, so obviously, this is way low. Okay. So we're not going to wait for the conductivity to come up, but I want to show you what you would do if you're, this is the point where you're getting ready to put your machine in test. Okay. So if I were going to test this machine for the alarm and pressure test, I would clamp the line to the transducer filter and remove it. Remember, I have one on my arterial line, blood line, and I have one on my venous blood line. So I clamped and removed that one. I'm gonna clamp and remove this one also, okay? Then there is a tab on the machine that says test and options. So I'm going to press test and options, and then you see here pressure test, alarm test, you would press both test, okay? And because I don't want to put the machine in test, if you were going to go forward, I would press confirm, which is right here, but I'm going to escape that. When the machine is finished testing, you would actually see all these, if it passed all the tests, you would see these blue X's all the way down. Anything that it failed would show up in a red X on this side. Okay, so I'm going to escape and go back to my home screen. Now, when your machine is finished and the test, it will say test complete. You're going to do the last thing that you did before pressing the test and option button was to remove your transducer filter protectors. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do when I'm finished testing is to put them back onto the machine. So I'm gently tightening them, then I'm going to hand open. After I have finished testing, now I'm going to do my pH and conductivity test. So I need my Phoenix meter and I need a cup. All right, and I turn on my meter by pressing the mode or the green button. All right, this is what a Phoenix meter or a handheld meter for conductivity and pH. And now I'm gonna get a sample of my dialysate. So if you could see what I'm doing right here is 
These are called the Hansen connectors. Clean dialysate comes through the blue. Dirty dialysate exits in the right. So I'm going to remove the blue Hansen. When I close the door, dialysate comes out and I'm going to catch a sample. I only need about 10 cc's for my pH and conductivity test. So as you can see, I keep my hand over the bucket. I use my other hand. I open the door, dialysate stop. You can see, close the door, dialysate close, open the door, dialysate stops.